Hi, Jackie. Hi, hello. Hi, it's good to see you and thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed um, on coaching and a coaching culture within the NHS. Um, the reason, there are a number of reasons that I wanted to speak to you this morning. One is because you did an amazing keynote at our conference about how you've applied coaching in, in and NHS Trust and people are still talking about it. So firstly, I kind of wanted to share some of your wisdom with more people than the people that were at the conference. Um, secondly, I think it's become more widely acknowledged now that coaching helps at an individual level. And I think we've got to fight so much to kind of prove that as coaches. But there's still, you know, there's still a big question in everyone's minds about can it really, really be implemented in an organisation to good effect? Uh, and how exactly do you do that? So, for example, I meet lots of organisations, people from organisations who say we want coaching culture. And when I say, what is that? They say, well, we don't really know what it means. And for me, you seem to be on that path towards creating a coaching culture. So just, you know, just wanted to know a bit more about how you have used coaching at Morecambe Bay NHS. Okay, okay. Kim, thank you. Thank you for those lovely words. Um, so, I, I we developed a programme called Flourish in this organisation and at its very heart is the sense that we want people to be the best that they can be. Um, because the evidence, certainly in healthcare, is that if you bring that out in staff, um, enable them to really flourish, be the best that they can be it has fantastic impact on patient care and outcomes for patients not just satisfaction but actually you know their um, outcomes from their treatment and care in, in hospital so I was kind of desperate to try and look at ways in which we could bring that about yeah so yeah we've um, I we've got a lovely little um, campaign run at the moment which which we use a hashtag lead by example so um, as you know um, I take coaching really seriously yeah. as a chief executive so and have done that really all of my career always engaged with a coach um, and so I talk quite a lot about that to my staff and my team and about the benefits that I, I, I find yeah um, but as you know, what we've done and also is um, made that available. I had to, coming into the trust at a really difficult time, had to accelerate the performance of my top team. So one-to-one -one coaching for, for them, particularly in that first probably 18 months, two years, um, I think I saw massive performance, massive acceleration of performance in the executive team. Yeah. Um, but since then, really, we've we've deployed coaching at different leadership levels um, in different ways. So, so we've done some group and team coaching. We've made individual one-to-one -one coaching available for new leaders. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I've really seen the benefits of what I think is, is a really accelerated journey of improvement for us as a trust. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Yeah, that, it's just amazing to hear that. And what really, really interests me is kind of at the patient-facing level. If yeah. if the nurse or the clinician or you know whoever is dealing with them is is flourishing themselves. Yeah. The, yeah. the evidence suggests that they are. Yeah, the, the 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 patient is going to benefit from that. So so how you you know you've explained how you have coaching and how the senior leadership team have coaching and new leaders perhaps, but how how does it get to everybody within the organisation that that you know they are flourishing too? So I think this is all about kind of cultural transformation. So it's about how we do things around here. It's it's you know. 
really at the heart of, of, of that notion about how we live, breathe, work in this organisation and as individuals within this organisation. So I think healthcare is a really good example. You know, we train, we've got highly trained groups of professionals yeah. who are trained brilliantly, technically, um, but often um, lack the kind of um, skills and understanding about how they work with self in that in that environment yeah. and bizarrely for a healthcare industry you know this is as much about teaching people to look after the bare essentials of of living well yeah and really flourishing and knowing that that's they've got permission to do that because if we do that for individuals for individual staff nurses you know receptionists porters chefs yeah um, or who contribute to patient care it makes a massive difference. Yeah. I mean, huge amount of discretionary effort yeah. I've seen that we gain, um, and that has lots of knock-on effects, you know. So not only do people say um, we feel happy, you know, in our roles, we feel, you know, not just happy with the role, but happy in work, happy working in this environment. Um, but we've seen interesting results, not just about staff satisfaction, faction but around recruitment and retention um you know starting to build a reputation where actually staff what is a great place to work and a great place to be cared for yeah. so i think it's it is really making a difference at every level yeah so I, I mean as you speak about it i can see that you're really passionate and excited about it and not just from a kind of idealistic theoretical point of view but it's happening it's in the fabric of your organization you can see the results so what kind what got you into it what first excited you about coaching i think i guess you know health is a people industry at its heart yeah you know, it's really all about the people um and i think I got excited, one, when I could kind of see the benefits having worked with coaches over time, you know, and being in some of the most challenging roles, just how, just how much, how easier it, it was to navigate through some of those difficult circumstances with the, with the support of a coach yeah. and understanding how much added, added value I could bring in that, under those circumstances. So, you know, when when you know it to be true, when you when you've experienced it, I think that's an important part of my belief. Quite. But then watching people develop, watching people literally flourish and grow, and um, have a deeper understanding of 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 how you know to lead, for example. Yeah. Yeah. You know, really. Um, when people are really using self as part of their tool tools toolkit. Yeah. And, and really see the value of being able to have some mastery about how you're leading yeah. and to, I guess, hone those skills through coaching and, and approaches like that. Yes. It's, it's magical, yeah. you know. Yeah, isn't it? And it's actually relatively simple. It doesn't have to be complicated, does it? Uh, you know, no. there are, um, I know you're aware of all the figures that support the fact that you're direct line manager has a has a huge impact on your own level of engagement and your happiness at work and uh, yeah. that can be achieved as you're saying by the simplest things by just um, a smile and a and a praise and an acknowledgement when you do something well that can actually knock on and sh and then then the person that receives that then does it to the next person and it's a, a kind of virtuous spiral isn't it it, it really is, a, and we call it kind of building, we, we use the term relational fabric. It's about building, it's not just engaging. No. It's actually much more, much more than that, Yeah. I think. Yeah, 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 it is. I love that. You can almost, as you said, that almost sort of sensed it all meshing together within your organisation, yeah. Um, Jackie, you and I have both been involved in coaching for a long time and I have certainly seen a shift 
in um, people's readiness for coaching, understanding of coaching over the years. When I first started, there was a huge amount of resistance and people thought it was fluffy and soft and all those things that, you know, those words that were bandied around. And now it seems to be accepted as a really valid and effective personal and professional development tool. Um, uh, what what have you noticed? What has shifted for you? Have you experienced that kind of embracing of coaching in the same way as I have? Yes, definitely. I think I think you experience it at a deeper level. I can only alchemy comes to mind when I think about you know how you can work with people and and how you can work to develop people and just a just a sense of a deeper an ability to kind of feel feel more more at ease with with taking people through um, that kind of development journey. So I've I've certainly sensed that, and I suppose I've grown to value it as being kind of mission critical yeah. in 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 the, the business objectives as well. So you know, it's not as you were referring to. It's not just that pink fluffy kind of nice to do stuff. No. It is fundamental. Yeah. To, to business development and in my case patient outcomes yeah you know it's been part of the thing that took us from a care quality commission inspection where we were adequate to one where we rated good and outstanding for caring that was a three-year improvement that's journey. astonishing that's yeah isn't it that's astonishing yes. yeah 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 Thank you, thank you. Even just listening to you talking about it still kind of excites me. Um, and, and one of the things that I think I have um, noticed over the years is that as we all become easier with it and more certain of its effectiveness, so I think the interventions we make are even more simple and less complex. I, I think if I think 20 years ago, I was trying to be too clever and maybe too academic and too theoretical. And now it is just those, you know, those simple relational things that are making the difference. Yeah. So what challenges, if any, I'm, I'm asking you this question with a little bit of hesitation because it sounds like within the organisation there's a real kind of, you know, a, a total engagement and onboarding of, of this. But ha, what have you had any challenges? Are you still encountering challenges? Yeah, I think that there has been challenges all the way through. and They've kind of varied depending on, you know, the point in the journey. But initially... You know, people are desperate, particularly regulators, are desperate for you to fix the problem. Yeah. So, you know, focus on real short-term transaction, your priority ought to be there. So I think sometimes it's difficult to um, put the business case forward when everyone just wants you to solve the problem that's in front of you today. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, absolutely you must make time and prioritise the funding needed to... To, to, to you know put coaching at every level um, because it's you know it's crazy just to think that you can focus on short-term transactions um, without working with with people in a much more holistic way um, to get longer term deeper running benefits um, but in healthcare particularly actually trying to get staff um, time away from the clinical area is quite a challenge and yeah. uh, so, so we had to do a number of things to to make that possible, including uh, improving staffing levels, just to create a little bit of headroom, yeah. a little bit of time um, for staff to be able to spend in coaching conversations. Yeah, wonderful. Obviously, you have influence as chief exec. You have influence, but I'm really interested to know, you know how, yeah, what what rationale, what argument do you put across to the regulators who say? like we need we you know we need to focus on what needs to be focused on right here and now and we can, haven't got time for a long game what yeah. how, how do you sell well, it I think, I think definitely the evidence is helping so you know um we just talked about that that really now the the, the evidence is quite compelling um that the discretionary effort you create through 
you know, enhancing performance of people um, in this way. And happy, happy staff definitely correlate happier and um, better better outcomes for patients. So thankfully that evidence now is there. Um, but it was interesting, work now being used as a case study by the Care Quality Commission. They've recently published a report about the work that we've done right. and a number of other trusts. And it is all pointing to pay attention to the, what I call the hardwiring, yeah. you know, risk management and performance management and all the things that keep you safe and yeah. that are really important for patient safety. But actually, don't do that at the expense of, you know, really engaging staff and really work, working with them to help them be the best it can be. Yeah, yeah. So I think it, there's definitely, we're definitely pushing at an open door. Um, and, you know, the more we talk about it and the more we make it absolutely apparent that it's relevant in healthcare like any other sector. Yeah. Um, I think the more permission we'll, we will get. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Um, finally, and it's a big question, but as I said in the beginning, l- lots of organisations say, you know, where do we begin? Um, we know it's going to take a while, it won't happen overnight, but we really believe in um, coaching being, you know, uh, uh, within the fabric of our organisation. So where do we start with it? What would you say to someone who wanted to start? Well, obviously, businesses are all different. um, But I think it starts at quite a basic level about why you think coaching may enhance what you're doing. And I think if you can, for us, it was all around Flourish. So that's been our big kind of campaign that links to physical health, mental well-being being uh, but also being the best that we can be um, as individuals so I think try and create a narrative a story around why this is important because I think people will embrace it so much more and I think you then need to figure out where do we start and in many ways I'm very I think it's very important to lead by example yeah so I think it's really the role modeling is really important um, so it's clearly important with the senior leadership, but I think then start some social movements for change using coaching at different levels in the organisation. Experiment a little bit, um, and but then talk about how it connects up, and how you know from a kind of micro level it connects to a macro big picture, um, and start to tr- to look for trends in improvements etc. That you can use to back up back up that story and that narrative, mm. that business case, if mm. you like. Mm. Yeah. And, but start, you yeah. know, get going and, and um, yeah. dip going and swim around and, you know, really, you know, kind of feel the liberation, I think, that coaching can bring. Yeah, that's wonderful advice. Thank you. I particularly like the focus on looking for, you know, looking for, changes that are happening looking for improvements that aren't necessarily obviously financial because yes there's a lot of emphasis on return on investment for coaching and i again i think we've moved a lot and people are now looking for return on investment that isn't necessarily financial but then that still tends to be the first place people go um, so I, I like the kind of narrative, just the individual stories that you specialise in. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, so couple of final questions. What next? We carry on. Yeah. Um, I think we carry on. I think that's the, the, the main thing. And um, as we all know, if we embrace with coaching, every session is different. There's a movement and a, and a, and a development usually uh, with every session. So, you know, you're never done. No, no. You're never done. You're never I think done. you can find ways to talk about what's happening within coaching and, and try and find a way to keep reframing the narrative around why coaching is important. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, we've got a big theme going on around compassionate care and what it's like to offer compassionate leadership. Mm. And that's a big theme in our coaching conversations. So the themes may change. And I think 
you know, if you're well connected with your staff, you'll pick that up. Yes. And you'll, 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 you might move the position and the lens in which you view coaching through, but it's always changing. And I think if you can keep your finger on the pulse in terms of what's important for staff, and talk about that. Yeah. Talk about what's getting in the way of them doing a really fantastic job. Yeah. yeah. And so <clears throat> we, I just think it's evolved every single year, probably every few months it's moving on and it's you know it's really organic it's really interesting but keeping check with how the narrative changing and, and what the frame you're looking through is like today yeah and i think you won't go too far wrong no no if you, if you do <clears throat> i don't want to keep you too long but yeah what occurs to me as i sit here listening to you is you make it sound so easy and how many staff are there in your trust? How many? So at the moment, we've got around six and a half thousand. Okay. And what impresses me about you is the fact that you, listening to you, I know that you do have your finger on the pulse and you do know what the staff are thinking and feeling and what's going on for them. <laughs> but that's a big ask, Jackie. How practically do you do that? How do you stay in touch yeah. with them? So by having conversations all the time with them. So sometimes they feel a bit virtual. So I do a lot of, uh, use a lot of social media, use a lot of technology to support, you know, the messages that I'm trying to convey. But I do a lot of face-to-face -face and just meeting small groups and large groups of staff a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, I ask my most senior team, the senior leaders, um, and it feels like you've kind of got, you know, a whole leadership army and they're not necessarily the most... Well, the most senior people, you know, they're just people who, you know, ask you know, ask for people to come and step forward and involved and whoa, you know, suddenly they do. Yeah. So you have a massive coalition of small and bigger groups, but that are all connected, I think, to what what it is you're trying to do. Yeah. I do work incredibly hard at trying to convey that and it does change and it does alter over time. Yeah. Um but it is possible. Uh, yeah, it is possible, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen that with you, and I know you do a. Is it a Friday? A Friday, Friday message every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I try and make that interactive. Try and involve other people talking about this. Take on the things I'm saying. Yeah. So, um, and I really thought I would dry up and have nothing to say after. <laughs> Um, Amazing. You know, and we use we try and make it light and fun yeah. and interactive if yeah. it's possible. But yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, every time I speak to you about this, I feel that kind of real surge of excitement about what you're doing. I really do. That's genuine and it, and it emanates from you. And I know you wouldn't want to say this yourself, but actually just, you know, you, you lead by example right from the top and it's kind of cascaded down because of you I think and and because other people have kind of picked up and run with it too but so, totally inspiring really practical and useful thank you my very final question is that you, I said right at the beginning you gave an amazing keynote about this at our conference is this is that something you do regularly? Is that something you would be prepared to do for other organisations too? Certainly is. I think um, one of the things I've realised um, is that narrating this, I'm worried that talking to people from other sectors or other industries that it wouldn't be relevant. Of course it is. Yeah. And um, so what I from the feedback, I'm I'm absolutely sure now that it does add value. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we, we promote our own org organisation, but most of all, it kind of spreads, I think, the belief in some of the techniques that are available out there. So really, really happy to, to do that for people at any point. Great. Jackie, thank you so much. On a Monday morning, you've set me <laughs> up for the week. Thank well, you. Happy.